Can I pull one hair from your head? Yes, a gray one, please. A gray one? <laughs> I can't see any. Let's just try just one. Did it hurt? No. One more time. No, no. <laughs> you see, you lied. What happens when someone pulls one single hair from your head? Alan, what would happen if I pulled a hair from your head? You would be fighting me. Well, in my case, I only have 74 hair left in my head. So I would not allow anyone to touch my hair. But when someone pulls a hair from our head, even though Jim says it doesn't hurt, it hurts all over your body, doesn't it? Many times you will say, ouch. And I think, how come one tiny piece of hair causes your mouth to open and say, ouch? Apparently, there is a connection of some sort, right? Between our balding heads and our big mouths. The, the nerves connect every single hair on our head to our nervous system. And when even one hair is pulled up, it hurts all over our body. Your chest hurts, your feet hurts, your hand hurt, because someone was crazy enough to pull a hair from your head. Such a tiny, insignificant part of who we are, and yet it is able to cause such a pain all over your body. Another example, pulling your teeth. I will not ask for volunteers for that process. But if you ever had your tooth pulled, you know how unpleasant of an experience it is. I got four wisdom teeth pulled two months ago at the same time. And I'm thinking, how come such a tiny piece of my body causes all these 200 pounds to be in pain? Each element of our body, each part of us is connected to the other parts. As human persons, we are a wonderful composition of all these individual body parts that are interconnected with each other. You cannot cut your finger off and pretend it doesn't hurt. It will hurt all over your body. The same applies to us as the church. St. Paul will say in one of his letters, don't you know that you are the body of Christ and you all belong to the same body? So if we are one body, if we are one church, we too are interconnected. If one of us is hurting and one of us is in pain, if one of us experiences injustice, we are all in pain. We are all suffering. We are all experiencing injustice. In America, in this wonderful country of ours, and even though I speak with a thick accent, I say our country, we have idolized the God of independence and individualism. The American ethos, especially the old Wild West ethos, is each man on his own. You have to be strong enough to survive on your own. If you cannot make it on your own, you are a sissy. You should be able to make it on your own. Each man should build a house, plant a tree, and have a baby, right? 
That's how you know you're a real American man. And this individualism has helped us many times. We are a society of strong individuals. It can be a positive value. But there are times when this extreme individualism leads us to sinful and evil situations. It can lead us to very extreme forms of libertarian lifestyle when we say, who cares if he cannot afford food? He should take care of himself. Why should I bother about someone else? They should be strong enough to do it on their own. And that's unfortunately not a Christian way of thinking. This is not a Christian way of behaving. As Christians, as members of the same body, we are connected to each other. We are responsible for each other. Yes, we are individuals. We are independent individuals. But at the same time, we are interconnected. When you hurt, I hurt. When you are happy, I am happy. When one part of the body is in pain, entire body is in pain as well. Christian churches, Catholic church included, have been suffering for the longest time with a disease of complacency. We have been complacent in face of injustice for too many centuries. We have pretended that we see no evil, we hear no evil, and we are happy. Think about it. For 1,800 years, Christian churches were fine with slavery. Catholics and Protestants were pretending that slavery is okay. We didn't want to be bothered with this evil in our societies. We didn't want to get involved, so we pretended as Christians of all different denominations that we can live with slavery. That even though we follow the teachings of Jesus, slavery is just fine. So we're pretending it doesn't bother us. For 18 centuries. Today it's unbelievable that Christians have remained silent in the face of such terrible injustice for 18 centuries. Now, similar story happened in Nazi Germany when in the 1930s Hitler won democratic elections to German parliament. Both Catholic Church and Lutheran Church were just fine with his party. Christians, bishops, preachers, priests were silent when step after step the Nazi government began to eliminate people. First, the handicapped children. Then, those who were mentally ill were eradicated, removed from the society. Then gypsies, homosexuals, Jews. And what did Christians do? Nothing. Both Catholics and Lutherans and other Protestants were silent when Hitler and his minions were moving on with their agenda. It's not our business. We go to church every Sunday, we pray, we are fine. See no evil, hear no evil. For some reason, 
Christians and Catholics alike, have been complacent. We have learned to live with injustice next to us. We have got used to the state of things. Why should I be bothered? I don't owe them anything, those gypsies, those Jews. As long as my family is fine, I'm fine. And so, one of the major sins of Christianity is remaining silent in the face of evil, is remaining complacent when our neighbors are taken away, where our sisters and brothers are in pain because we choose to say nothing. You know, especially if you live in the suburbs, the unwritten rule of life in the suburbs is don't stick your nose into your neighbor's business, right? Don't look into your neighbor's bedrooms. Pretend you don't see what they are doing. Mind your own business. But this is not what the gospel tells us today. Jesus says, when you see injustice happen next to you, speak up your mind. Get involved. Tell that person, you shall not do that. What you are doing is wrong. I cannot be silent when evil is happening next to me. I think Jesus would have been kicked out of every neighbor's association because he was not able to mind his own business. He says, go and tell your brother what you are doing is wrong. Don't remain complacent. Don't stay silent when people around you are suffering or when people around you are causing suffering. As Christians, as Catholics, we have been dead silent for too long. We have been complacent for too long. It's easier. And if you are lazy as I am, it's much more comfortable. Why should we get involved? We are minding our own business and we are just fine. In the last month, many of our parishioners, thank goodness, got involved in the events that were taking place in Ferguson. I saw some of you praying there, standing, holding vigils. And that's a wonderful image to see. Christians standing together to protect those who have no protection. Just last Friday morning, several of our parishioners were demonstrating in front of Coriezu School, which fired two women for apparently no reason. So slowly, we as Catholics are waking up. Slowly, step after step, we are learning how to stand up, how to get involved. We need to learn, we need to continue to learn how not to be complacent how not to be silent in the face of evil. When Nazis were eliminating Jews, Gypsies, and everyone who didn't fit their white Aryan agenda, most of the priests, most of the bishops, even the Vatican was silent. Some of the priests, some of the preachers chose not to. The most famous preacher, German Lutheran pastor, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, chose to stand up and speak out his mind and take action against this terrible injustice. He was murdered. He was executed. He paid 
the highest price for his courage. But in one of his writings, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, the worst thing that Christians can do is to say nothing and do nothing in the face of evil. The worst thing we can do is to say nothing and do nothing in the face of evil. As Christians, we need to be involved. As Catholics, as followers of Jesus, we cannot pretend, we cannot live as if there was no injustice and evil around us. Don't mind your own business. Stand up courageously for what is right. For we truly are one body. When one part of our body hurts, when one tooth is removed, when one neighbor, sister or brother is hurting, we are all hurting. Sometimes when I walk around downtown area, I get asked for change at least twice every hour. You have, I'm sure, the same experience. And many times I get annoyed. I just gave your body two dollars ten minutes ago. And sometimes I wish I could say, you know what, I don't owe you anything. Legally speaking, that would be right, correct? I don't owe them anything. I am not their parent. I am not responsible for their well-being. But today's second reading says, owe nothing to each other but to love one another. Owe nothing but to love one another. So, legally speaking, we don't have to feed the hungry. Legally speaking, we don't have to welcome the strangers. Strictly speaking, we don't have to visit the sick or the prisoners. Legally speaking, we don't need to stand up against injustice. We don't owe them anything. But Paul reminds us, owe nothing but to love one another.